All right. Uh, hello. So my name is Leighton Piri, and um, I am from the University of Zambia, uh, which is located in the Republic of Zambia, of course. Um, uh, so the title of um, my talk is Effective Ingestion of Digital Objects in Institutional Repositories Using Subject Repositories. It's quite a mouthful, but that's fine. Um, I just wanted to mention up front that this, uh, this, this work was, uh, was actually co-authored by five um, uh, research students that I, I, I have worked with in the recent past. Now, in case you are wondering, uh, Zambia is located in the southern part of the African continent, so that's the green patch uh, just down there. And depending on your world view, um, perhaps you'd argue that it's a green patch that's up there, up there. Um, but that's fine. Um, um, so I'm currently a faculty staff at the University of Zambia, but before then, um, I was um, a graduate student at the University of Cape Town. Uh, for a little over seven years when I was pursuing my master's and my doctoral studies. Um, I'm, I'm currently the founding member of what we're calling the Data Lab Research Group, which comprises of uh, faculty staff and students that work in three key areas. So that's data mining, digital libraries, and technology enhanced learning, otherwise uh, referred to as educational technology. Um, I do encourage you to find time and uh, just visit our, our site. Um, there's a lot of interesting research that we've been up to. Um, and perhaps you might identify an area that you might be uh, interested in collaborating um, with us. So the motivation behind uh, this work really is quite simple. Um, if you look at the global landscape insofar as research um, output or research publication is concerned, what you will notice is that there's a, a disp disproportionate representation in terms of the research output that is generated from the so-called global south, and in particular uh, from places such as the African continent. Um, so if you look at visualizations produced by entities such as World Mapper, um, you'll notice that the situation is really bad. Uh, this particular visualization showcases publications um, um, uh, published between, uh, or research output published between 2010 all the way up to uh, 2017, it was, I believe. Um, and so you notice that the situation is quite bad, really. Uh, there's a no noticeably low um, research output seemingly originating from the African continent. And in fact, recent studies um, indicate that Africa generates less than 1% of the world research output, uh, despite the fact that um, it, 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 it actually uh, uh, accounts for roughly 12.5% of the global population. So the situation is quite bad, really. And if you dig deep into this problem and try and just do a superficial analysis of statistics that are compiled by specific academic databases, um, such as OATD in this case, um, it gives you an idea of just how bad the situation is. So the way OATD works is um, um, this is a portal that automatically harvests metadata associated with electronic thesis and dissertations from around the world, um, and these statistics are actually compiled. Um, now, if you look at this visualization, key takeaway points here is that the block size um, uh, implicitly indicates the relative contribution of uh, thesis and dissertations from that particular region or country. And the order, obviously, left to right means uh, 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 it also signals the relative uh, quantity of ETDs that are produced by that particular region or country. In this case, you notice that the largest proportion is coming from Europe, obviously. A key thing here is that if you look at uh, what's coming from Africa, you'll notice that uh, we're at the end here, at the tail end. Um, and in fact, you will notice that uh, a huge chunk of the ETD is actually coming from, from South Africa, really. Right? Um, this just showcases how bad the situation is. And, and, and this, in fact, is a motivating factor behind why we conducted this study um, and a number of other studies that we are currently conducting and that we've conducted in the recent past. Um, so our, our, our recent, uh, or pro research um, has actually given us uh, a sneak preview of how bad the situation is in, um, in the Republic of Zambia in particular. Um, so we set out uh, in one of our most recent works to try and understand just how bad the online visibility of research output is in Zambia. And what we discovered really is that, uh, is that there's, there's only very few higher education institutions in the Republic of Zambia that explicitly make available um, the research output that they produce online, right? Um, and even the few that actually do explicitly make available this research output online um, have, have not really been consistently making available this research output. Now, this has huge implications, right? 
Um, it has huge implication on things such as the ranking associated with the um, with 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 these higher education institutions, essentially. Um, and, and so to, to, to try and work towards this problem itself, what we, we have done is we've set out to, uh, to, to take advantage of what we're calling a multifaceted approach. And so we, we've, we've, we've been working towards a number of initiatives um, that involve so many different things, uh, uh, from sensitizing uh, our colleagues on the importance of making available this um, research output that is produced by that, their uh, higher education institutions, um, and also trying to showcase exactly how we can take advantage of uh, open access publishing platforms to make available this um, research output. Um, but besides that, something we have been doing is to try and take advantage of uh, technology, right, um, to, to try and address this problem. So for instance, we've been experimenting with a number of machine learning techniques to try and see how we can autom automate some of these manual processes associated with making available um, research output online. <clears throat> right, and so um, the, 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 the main uh, problem that we set out to address in this particular study is centered around uh, the many challenges that are associated with uh, making available research output on uh, so-called institutional repositories. Now, an institutional repository is nothing more than uh, a technological platform that is explicitly used by uh, a higher education institution um, to make available research output, right? So this could be uh, technical reports, for instance, uh, preprints associated with uh, journal publications, uh, conference proceedings, um, and in fact, indeed, even electronic thesis and dissertations. And the idea here is you, you, you have this central location uh, which is used to showcase um, uh, your, your, your research output as an institution. Now, so the main problem associated with, with making available this content, really, at least this is specific to the Invest of Zambia, tends out to be um, uh, more linked to the fact that there's, there's, there's a shortage of uh, human resource that have been tasked to ingest or to deposit this research output in the institutional repository, right? Um, and not only that, the process of ingesting the content into the institutional repository tends to be time consuming. And so um, as a result, um, what, what has uh, ended up happening is a sort of situation where there's this huge backlog of, um, of scholarly research output that has not yet been ingested into the repository. Um, and so to, to address this problem, we, we actually set out to investigate if it would be possible to take advantage of so-called subject institution repositories um, in order to address the problem, right? So the idea behind uh, a subject repository here is that uh, rather than having an institution-wide repository, you can set up clusters or satellite repositories that may be specific to a particular discipline. Um, and then the subject repositories would be used to synchronize content to the institution-wide repository. Um, and in essence, what we did was we, we, we set out to, to try and understand the extent of the problem we were trying to address, and then to, to, dem to, to determine whether it would be feasible to implement a subject repository. Um, and of course, uh, to, to, to ascertain the perceived usability associated with the subject repository. Um, in essence, we see our main contribution as being associated with uh, the um, uh, experimental results uh, originating from uh, the studies, uh, usability studies con conducted, um, um, our demonstration that it is indeed possible for us to, to use or to, to take advantage of subject repositories to, to attempt to address this problem. So we, we, we set out to conduct this study using a mixed methods approach, uh, which involved uh, content analysis, interview sessions, and, and of course, implementation and subsequent evaluation of the subject repository itself. In terms of the content analysis, what we did was we extracted um, uh, metadata associated with content currently ingested into the UNS institution repository. Um, and we did this using the OAI, OAI PMH protocol, essentially, um, and then did uh, an in-depth analysis of the, of, the, um, of the metadata itself by focusing on specific metadata elements. We also conducted uh, uh, in, uh, interview sessions with uh, staff in the library that are responsible for ingesting uh, digital objects into the repository. And the idea here was to understand um, the workflow that they go through when ingesting content. 
Um, we, 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 so we, we set up, um, <coughs> we, we implemented an, a subject institution repository using um, an open source platform uh, called Dispace. Um, and then obviously configured it so that it was specific to the particular uh, domain we were implementing the subject repository for, essentially. In terms of synchronization with the institution-wide repository, we, we took advantage of the uh, OI PMH protocol and the OI ORE protocols um, to, to actually ensure that there was seamless uh, synchronization, synchronization of content in the subject repository into the institutional repository. So the idea is uh, when you ingest content into your subject repository, you can synchronize it with the institution-wide uh, repository, seeing as people would use this as a basis to, to gain a sense of um, the research output that is generated by your institution. Um, so the, the major uh, outcomes of the study here is uh, in terms of the content analysis, what we discovered was that uh, there's really uh, very little content associated with uh, research done by faculty staff. The large, large proportion of the research actually is generated by, um, uh, is associated with uh, electronic thesis and dissertations, uh, as can be seen from this tree map as well. Um, and this is, uh, this is especially worrying for us because the, the, the representation of content seemingly produced by faculty staff does not um, um, uh, reflect the total number of faculty staff um, uh, employed by the institution, right? So there's a disp disproportionate representation of um, online content in the repository and the, the, the total number of faculty staff. <clears throat> and then in terms of the ingestion pattern here, we see that uh, th there's really a, a number of irregularities associated with when content is ingested into the repository. Um, and this makes sense because there's, there's a lean staff complement that is uh, responsible for ingesting content into the repository, ideally. Um, and also, as a result, you tend to have, uh, uh, we've noticed that there's a backlog of legacy content that hasn't yet been uploaded in the repository. Um, so we, we evaluated, we set up the repository and we evaluated uh, uh, its relative usability by uh, using uh, a system usability scale, and what we discovered really is that uh, overall, um, the the on average, the the overall score um, is tied to an acceptable SAS score really. And and if you try and link this to um, uh, SAS adjective ratings, what you notice really is that overall, uh, the perception is that the usability of of the subject repository was uh, was good. Right? In terms of uh, what uh, we actually did in this study, a reminder here that we set out to, 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 to conduct a case study that was aimed at assessing the feasibility of using subject institutional repositories for facilitating effective ingestion of digital content into uh, institutional repositories. Um, and to do this, we conducted an empirical analysis of um, digital objects in the Invest of Zambia uh, IR um, to try and demonstrate the extent of the problem. Um, we also implemented a subject repository that is meant to de decentralize the end-to-end uh, -end process of ingesting content into an institution-wide repository. Um, and, and, and we did this to demonstrate that it's actually feasible uh, to set up subject repositories. Now, now the obvious benefits of this are, are, are quite, quite of, they're quite simple, really, right? Um, this, this idea of using uh, 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 subject repositories as a potential of complementing um, other uh, seemingly um, potentially viable op uh, options of, of addressing this challenge, such as self-archiving. Um, and and so, so, so what we're trying to say here is that subject repositories have a potential to complement self-archiving in order to um, ensure that there's eff effective ingestion of digital content into the repository. Um, and ultimately, the goal really is to ensure that uh, um, that higher education institutions are in a better position to make available content uh, online. Um, so this is some of the, uh, uh, some literature related to the uh, study itself, um, most, most of which have been authored or co-authored by myself. Um, my contact details in the event that you need to reach out to me. Uh, thank you very much, and I, I look forward to a very fruitful uh, interaction on this very important topic. Good day.